Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, I got to tell you, this countdown is really stressful for every, I, at least for me, but I think for every presenter, it's like counting down. And I, I am, uh, when the countdown is going down, reaching zero, it's like the stress is accumulating in me. And so I don't like this feeling. But anyway. Um, Hello everyone again. My name is Carol uh, Jacques. Uh, I'm a software development engineer working for Microsoft. And my today's session is about uh, deep learning, um, object recognition, classification, and all that using CNTK, which is Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit, um, to basically solve one of our partners' uh, challenge. And, Yes, before I begin, uh, feel free to ask any questions. You can either um, ask them as we go, or you can just hold them till the end of the presentation. We'll have uh, some time after my, my, uh, my slides or my presentation, whatever, for you to have a Q&A, right? Great. Uh, if you would like to um, connect with me after uh, Code Europe, you can do it um, either by email or Twitter. Or uh, I advise you strongly advise you to check out my GitHub um, account. There you can find everything I'll be showing today. So all the projects uh, I did, and especially this this project I'll be talking about, uh, is all. Uh, published to GitHub and you can reuse it and everything. So, yes, um, let us begin then. Um, first off, before we move into move deeper into the subject, uh, let me tell you what's the background be, be f behind this uh, behind this presentation. So, um, all the learnings I will be showing you come from um, an engagement, a project I did. A proof of concept project I did with uh, one of our partners, uh, which is a travel tech startup company from Poland. Um, they do like uh, tailored hotel offers, both for uh, B2C, but mostly, uh, mostly um, B2B. So they cooperate uh, with travel offer providers, uh, with travel agencies, and so on. And uh, what they do, they basically offer a software as a service solution uh, to optimize the work of uh, travel, travel agencies, of travel agents, uh, and to help them out to um, you know, process um, accommodation requests from their clients faster. Because um, hotelers told me that um, even now, over 90% of travel agencies still use like manual uh, methods to to um, to process the accommodation requests. Uh, so basically, they do it all manually. They send it via email or uh, phone and stuff like that. And with their software, they can do it much, much uh, faster, even 10 times faster. So it's, uh, it's really, um, really useful. So now that you know who I worked with, I'm going to tell you what was the challenge. So first off, people buy with their eyes. So what you see is what, what you buy uh, and what you get. And so the hotel offers you offer to your clients should be um, first simple, right? It, it, can, it can't be like 200 or 300 images showing everything uh, what's in this hotel. Uh, you rather want to go simple and show them just five to 10 images that best describe what you can find in this specific hotel. That's one. Uh, another thing, they currently have over 50 plus million uh, pictures from multiple sources um, and for almost 1 million hotels all over the world in almost uh, 200 countries. Uh, and it's still growing. It's 50 million now, like 50 million static um, static images, but it's still growing, and every provider they uh, integrate with gives them another millions of images of uh, their hotels. So uh, it, it grows like crazy. And, and the challenge here is to we wanted to um, find a way to first classify the images, um, classify the images, so we know that this specific picture is bedroom, or bathroom, or hotel front, or reception, or restaurant, 
anything else. Uh, so that was the one thing we wanted to um, cover. The second one was to find a way uh, to say which picture is better than the other, right? Because if we have one hotel, right, and we have hundreds of pictures for this one hotel only, and we have, per se, um, 10 or 15 images of bathroom, uh, that's not good. We want to select just one picture that will be, in our opinion, that would best describe uh, this hotel, how it looks, what it offers, and stuff like that. So um, we figured a solution which involves object detection and classification using deep learning. And so we thought that um, maybe we should, uh, we should try to find um, objects related to specific types of uh, rooms, right? So let's say uh, for our POC, we used bedroom and bathroom as an example. And for each of those types of uh, rooms, we assigned few um, objects that are uh, strongly connected to this uh, particular type of um, picture so or room. So for example, bedroom, that will be pillow, that will be bed. Uh, curtains, we figured that uh, in the process that curtains is something that every hotel room uh, has, or most of the hotel rooms um, uh, have. And uh, bathroom, you know, tap, sink, a toilet, uh, shower, and everything. And then based on that, so if we say we have uh, let's say 10 pictures of bathroom from one hotel, right? And we know that th this picture uh, only shows um, toilet, and another picture only shows sink, right? And another uh, picture shows sinks, uh, sink and towels. Um, and then we have a picture which shows, you know, shower, towel, sink, toilet, everything basically. We know this picture is better because it more completely shows uh, what's, what, what you can find in this uh, bathroom. Um, and this is this was our idea for a solution, and uh, yeah. So this concept should look something like this. Um, we, this is just a visualization, right? But we provide our model with um, with an image, and it tells us what it can find there, right? Um, Yes, and of course, this is just a visualiza visualization, as I mentioned. We would rather like to work on uh, this thing, which is basically a cl uh, cloud of tags, right? Where we have some kind of rectang rectangle uh, label assigned to this rectangle and score how confident we are that this is a uh, pillow or this is bed or anything else. Yeah. And for visualization, it's just plotting, you know, so we can better uh, see uh, what was recognized, was this recognition, um, object recognition correct or not. So we were trying to achieve something like this. And uh, what we, uh, so if we would like to present all the flow, like the whole flow of uh, what we wanted to do, uh, it goes like this. We start with a picture we want to um, classify or uh, use object detection for classification of objects. Um, then we provide it to our uh, model, object detection model, trained with CNTK. Um, and then we get, not plotted, but um, results in a JSON form as a cloud of tags. And then the next step would be to um, use some kind of script algorithm, maybe some kind of smart model, uh, to basically tell us um, how good of a bathroom or bedroom in this uh, this example uh, this picture is, right? How good it shows the bedroom or or uh, any other type of room, right? And then we. Um, we get, uh, of course, the results saying, yes, this is a bedroom with 95% confidence. Uh, we put it in our database, and then basically when we prepare a hotel offer, we uh, select the best picture with, say, best rating um, or best score in this, in this example. So um, how we did it? I already mentioned we use CNTK, um, but before we move to CNTK, uh, the most exhausting part is to prepare the data set. I don't know how many of you ever worked with uh, any neural networks or deep learning uh, frameworks. How many of you? 
tell me this. Okay, it's kind of 50-50. Okay, so uh, guys who, who already work with uh, this kind of tools, you know that preparing the data set is the most uh, exhausting thing to do. That's why our POC was uh, limited only to two types of uh, images and only you know four objects per, per type. And uh, yeah, so to, to prepare the data set, uh, we used um, tagging, oh, sorry, uh, scripts, Python scripts uh, that you can find in CNTK 2.1. Um, it's interesting, you cannot uh, find it in 2.2. It was just um, extracted there uh, from there because uh, there's a new tool you can use. I, I was, okay, so um, let's move back a little. Why I use those scripts, which are not uh, supported anymore? Uh, I use them because I was used to them. <laughs> this, that's it. I had experience using them before, and uh, I knew how to use it, and I just used it. Uh, there's a new tool, though. Uh, it's called VOTT, so um, Visual Object uh, Tagging Tool, uh, which is uh, which is supposed to be much better than simple scripts. But for our project, we we um, we limited ourselves to to the scripts only. And the scripts, they there were two scripts, C1 and uh, C2. Um, C1 script uh, we use to draw the rectangles. So basically, to draw rectangles over over the objects we were interested in. So bed or lamp or uh, the poster shouldn't be tagged here, um, and anything else we would be interested in. Um, then we use script C2 um, to assign labels. So for each rectangle we previously um, drawn, we had to assign a label, either you know bed, um, toilet, uh, curtain, pillow, and everything else. You right? And the third script script we use, we called it C3. Um, this one was used just for visualization because when you tag so many uh, images, it's uh, common to do mistakes. You you know skipped one pillow or you uh, misclicked and you um, drawn an empty rectangle or something like that. So this script was just for visualization. So you can go through each uh, image and say, oh, I missed this pillow or uh, I'm missing something here or there's too much tags or anything. So we use it for visualization. Um, okay. I can actually show you how we did it. Right. So um, let me just move to VS Code. Right. So I have three scripts here C1, C2, C3. Um, I'm not going to go much into the details, what's in there, but as I already mentioned, um, C1 is used to draw the B boxes, so bounding boxes over my objects. Uh, C1 is, C2 is to assign the labels, and C3 just for visualization to review whether we um, assigned all the labels correctly and bounding boxes are good. So let me just show you how it works. Uh, over here. Mm, detection. I need this. Mm -hmm. C1. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, maybe I will just, before I, I'm going to show you this tool, let me just show you our data set because it's uh, equally important. I don't know if you guys can see something here because from this distance I cannot see anything. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Do we have a technician here? No. All right. Maybe I will try to do something about that. Try this. Is it? It's better? Okay. So you guys couldn't see anything on the screen, and yet you sat here and said nothing. <laughs> just, just a little cringe. Okay, okay, gotcha. So that's probably. Um, okay, I cannot zoom it. I don't know how to zoom it. Mm, maybe like this, whatever. 
But tell me, can you, you can see this, right? It's quite large, all right. What's happening here? I was about to show you the data set, right? So we, in our data set, the two most important things is positive and to test images. Positive is basically our training set. Uh, test images is our test set, our evaluation set. So let's go on and see the uh, our positives. So our training set is basically a bunch of uh, images of bathrooms from different different hotels. Um, Sorry, I changed the resolution. Is it okay? It's okay. Great. Hopefully, um, as you can see on all of those pictures, you have a bunch of different objects we we would tag for training. So it's not like one picture, one uh, sample for training. Uh, every picture is uh, we basically take something from every picture, like multiple um, regions. So, for example. Let's say from here, right? We would take the sink, we would take the tap, we would take the toilet. So it's not just single image, one sample, one training sample. It's split into multiple ones. So this is our training set. We can move to bedrooms, hopefully. Yay, bedrooms. And then, um, so that will be our data set. I will show you the numbers later. Um, let's go here, annotation tool. So this is the C1 script I told you before. Um, and here I would just draw rectangles over every object that is interesting for me. So in our case, that will be lamp, that will be bed, that will be um, another lamp. We can even use the a mirror here. What else? Pillows. Right, and there's no curtains, so that will be all actually. So I can move to another. I'm not going to go through each uh, image. One is enough. We can go ahead and run the C2 script. Uh, ah, sorry, C2 tab. Oh. That's right. And now we basically go through each, we iterate through each rectangle we tagged previously and just say, uh, this is lamp, this is uh, bed, this is another lamp, and lamp, and pillow, and pillow, and that's it, right? And it generates for us something like this. So for each image, we get two additional files, um, .tsv files. One is with the B boxes. Let's just try to... Uh, open it here, try and fail, uh, this. right? So this is just a collection of rectangles, the bounding boxes, and another file is a collection of uh, labels assigned to each, um, each bounding box. This is how we tag our data set, and right. Okay, okay, I didn't show you the last script, of course, the Python C3, this, right? And this is just, as I mentioned, just to visualize um, all our regions, uh, the, the bounding boxes we, we drawn and the labels we assigned, just to be clear, uh, to, to make sure everything is correct. Right, um, okay, let's get back here. Um, of course, there, there are many links here, but I will um, I will share it with you the presentation. I will send it send it to organizers of Code Europe. But of course, if you want to want to have it faster, you can just uh, email me or message me on Twitter or whatever. I will share it instantly with you. Moving forward, when we have our data set uh, prepared, which I, as I mentioned before is the most uh, time consuming. Um, thing to do, we move to uh, to the training of our model. So we basically use the, the, the uh, train um, the tag data set uh, to train our, our model. We use, as I mentioned, Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit for that. So an open source uh, deep learning framework uh, from Microsoft. And then um, 
we started with fast RCNN approach, uh, but then we, after some research and uh, honestly, after faster RCNN was uh, was released for sorry was released for uh, CNTK, we basically switched to to faster RCNN because it's much faster, uh, better performance, better accuracy, and everything. But uh, what is fast and faster RCNN? It's basically uh, two types of region-based convolutional network, neural networks. Um, and what's the difference between the fast and faster? Um, faster is obviously faster. <laughs> And it is, really. It's, it's the uh, only difference, really. Uh, so fast RCNN uh, uses the same base. So it uses the CNN convolution, convolutional neural network uh, to extract features from every image, to do some transformations, and to make it into a, a stage where it can further classify what's in this image. So it you know, would take the some kind of borders, uh, angles, uh, it would recognize colors and stuff like that. So it extracts features from our image. And uh, then in faster, uh, fast RCNN approach, we, um, we use external um, region proposal algorithm. Because every object detection um, approach takes uh, two things. First, you need to uh, extract regions from your uh, from your image. So you have to propose some image for classification because uh, simple classification is really simple to do. It's f it's easy, uh, but uh, to detect objects, this is really hard because uh, this is the uh, the bottleneck of, of it all. You need to propose. Uh, regions for further classification. So for one, uh, like for one, let's say bathroom uh, image, we may have hundreds of uh, proposed regions to further classify them. Um, so it, it it is the real bottleneck. And here, uh, this uh, whole thing can work on GPU. This, the external algorithm we use, so the selective search, uses CPU and is extremely slow. And you can do nothing about it. It takes up to say two seconds per image to propose some regions, right? In comparison, uh, faster RCNN does um, region proposal in 0.2 uh, seconds, right? So it's much, much uh, faster. And uh, why is it faster? Well, simply because it does not um, use any external really slow uh, algorithm. It's just use another neural network to do it, and this neural network uses um, the same the same features from from extracted from the convolutional neural network. So basically, uh, it's really really time. Um, uh, it's much faster, basically, right? Because um, you in in both approaches so in fast and faster you still need to uh, train your cnn right uh, uh, but in this approach you had to use selective search for region proposal so totally external thing and here rpn so region proposal network uses the same trained cnn uh, which you further use for classification so this is pretty pretty cool and so we decided to go with faster rcnn um, in short what is the CNN, Convolutional Neural Networks. Uh, it's, simply put, it's a multi-layer neural network, uh, which basically on each another layer, it transforms your image. So it takes like the little chunk of your chunk of your uh, image, uh, it transforms it, uh, transforms it uh, using um, some kind of filters and with specific weights. Uh, of course, at the beginning, at the very beginning of training our model, those weights are totally random. We don't know which weight uh, is the best to, you know, recognize um, borders of uh, the Im of the objects on our image and stuff like that. Um, so it has to learn which uh, filters and which weights are the best to extract features from our um, image, and then. Uh, based on those filters, it gen generates uh, feature maps, and those feature app maps are further used for classification, right? Um, yeah. So uh, I mentioned that every CNN, at the very beginning, when we start training, uh, is just stupid. It just takes some random weights and 
tries to tries to train uh, tries to um, transfer our image and you know check w uh, what's going to uh, happen. And in order to make it smart uh, to train it, we need a huge amount of data, uh, a really huge data set, um, and labeled one. So imagine that we only tagged around 120 images, and imagine tagging, I don't know, maybe 20 million images or something like that. Uh, it's, it's very, very <laughs> time consuming, definitely. Um, but luckily, luckily for us, uh, there's something called transfer learning. Uh, does anyone know what transfer learning does? Hands up. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, um, in short, transfer learning um, basically takes a pre-trained model, which was, uh, in this case, was uh, trained on much, much bigger data set. For our project, we use the AlexNet one, the AlexNet uh, model. Uh, short background from, uh, about those different models and uh, data sets. Um, there's a annual, or maybe it happens every two years, I'm not sure. There's a competition, basically. There's a, there's a deep learning co competition uh, where um, you have to train a best model uh, on the same data set. Everybody works on the same data set, of course, a training and testing data set. And the guy who basically builds the uh, best model um, wins it, right? What does it mean, best model? It means uh, the one with mm, best precision, best accuracy, uh, recall, and everything. So, uh, and they train it on a data set, which is 0.2 million images and 1,000 categories, which is objects, different objects. Uh, and it's just the part of even bigger data set, which is 15 million images and 22,000 classes. So um, doing a quick math, you can say that per category, so per class, they had around 1,000 uh, images, right? This is huge, and we couldn't afford it. We had just, I didn't tell you that before, but we only had like three days to do something, to get some results, to do a POC. Uh, so we couldn't afford it, and that's why we use transfer learning. Um, so transfer learning allows you to take a pre-trained model, which was built by somebody, somebody else and trained by, by somebody else, so it's already smart, it can recognize things. Uh, the CNN already has the right features to extract um, from, from the images. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, the right weights to extract features from images. And, and you just copy paste it, basically. Uh, you can even freeze all the weights that are uh, trained in that uh, pre trained model and reuse them with your model. The only thing we had to change is this, uh, was this last, um, it's th that last layer, it's called fully connected layer, which is used for classification. But everything, you know, about the object detection, uh, extracting feature, the whole CNN thing, we just basically copy pasted it because our domain which we worked in uh, was very similar to, to the one which AlexNet uses. Of course, you cannot do it um, for every scenario. Our scenario was fairly simple uh, because it was, you know, similar objects we wanted to recognize that you can find in uh, those data sets. But if you imagine a scenario where you would like to work on, I don't know, detecting cancer cells in images, right, and medical images, uh, that's a whole different thing, different scenario, and um, I don't think you can use any of those models. You would rather want to train your own model and uh, train it so it better works in your domain. Um, right. Ah, one more thing to mention here, transfer learning is uh, really um, flexible. So. Of course, we copy it um, the whole CNN. We just uh, changed the uh, classifier, so we didn't classify the you know 1,000 categories. We only classified for our eight categories, and that's it. Uh, but you can, it's flexible. You can you know unfreeze those weights and retrain them with your data, and you can extract some layers. So you can still, uh, it's not a, you don't have to copy paste it all you have you can you have a uh, power to uh, work with it and adjust it for your um, project okay of course 
It's recommended to train your model um, using a machine with really strong GPU, um, but not for all the projects. I, I mean, we use GPU for this project. We use uh, Azure Data Science virtual machines with um, NVIDIA GPUs on board. It was either, I think we used K80s, so like server, um, server uh, GPUs. And when it comes to numbers, let me zoom it in a little bit. And using uh, using uh, using those VMs with GPUs is uh, I mean it simplifies things because right now I have Razer with quite f uh, quite amazing GPU power. But back then when we worked on this project, uh, I didn't have this uh, device, so um, it was nice to use you know something. Uh, like this, something powerful like this, because our training took, uh, it was really fast. On GPU, it was around 20 to 30 minutes, right? So it was fairly, uh, fairly fast. Um, of course, this was just a small POC, so if we would have more data set, the bigger data set and uh, more iterations, training iterations, it would take much, time, much more time, but yeah. Um, our data set in numbers, so how many um, training samples or tagged objects we had per class. For example, uh, for a sync, we had 46 objects that were trained for, um, tagged for training set, and just 10, um, 10 tagged objects for the test set. Right? But as you can see, we never had more than 100 uh, objects tagged for training. So it, this is a really small number. And still, we were able to uh, achieve uh, very good results. It's only because we used transfer learning. So we didn't have to train the whole CNN thing. It was smart uh, enough to, to extract features from Im images without our uh, help. And uh, that's the uh, results we get. Um, Right, so um, mean average precision for um, for every cl every class. As you can see, there are some uh, funny numbers there, like towel. This is a complete mystery. Uh, we still would need to <laughs> look into it. What happened there? Whether it's related to our data set, or I don't know, maybe we tagged something uh, incorrectly. Uh, we didn't, as I mentioned, we only had three days, so uh, we didn't have time to dig into it. Mm, but yeah, towel is diff is it's just it's weird that there's nothing. It's just zero. It's like uh, because it doesn't take only you know into cons consideration. It it does not take only the number of recognized uh, correctly recognized um, objects but it also takes into consideration how many how many times our model said that this was a towel towel but in reality it was nothing or maybe bad or anything else right so this is weird it's zero plain zero strange but um okay that's a bonus so let's let me show you one thing, right. So in order to train our model, um, we use actually two main scripts. First, we had to uh, install the pre-trained model. So the AlexNet model we used, which is download, wait. Oh, there it is. So we used the pre-trained model. We had to download it. We, of course, had to download our data set. It's uh, on Blob. Mm. And then create map mappings. Map create mappings, it, it simply goes through your data set and creates the two, or sorry, five mapping files, which basically takes all the files in your positive or test images and um, assign some values used by our, by our next script, which is faster RCNN. This is what we use to train our model, sorry, to train our model and then to, um, to evaluate it, right? And of course, I'm not going to show you the full training, so I'm going to just show you um, how it look, looks when we try to evaluate it. So Python faster RCNN. So of course CNTK. Um, sorry, like this maybe. CNTK tries to connect with uh, our GPU and it does that. Oh my God, 
come on. Mm -hmm. So it has to finish, and then I'm going to scroll up, because either, yeah. There it is. So CNTK uh, connects with uh, our GPU. Um, because our model is already trained, so it does not train it, uh, retrain it. It just uh, tries to evaluate it on our test images data set. And it does that, and it plots all the results on our images. So if we go to the output of our um, training here, we'll find our model, the train model, uh, with dot model extension. We'll try, we'll find the a visual visualization of our um, our model, so we can see all the layers here. Here, as you can see, uh, we we got all the convolutional um, neural networks network layers here, uh, right? And then we have a folder with uh, all the plotted uh, images, right? So basically, all the results we have, of course. There are some mistakes, uh, like bad, for example. This is bad, by the way. You can't see it, but it's bad. <laughs> it's white on yellow background, but it's it's bad, and it's bad. <laughs> uh, it should not be bad, um, but it is. But still, uh, based on um, other objects and other uh, regions uh, that we uh, found here, we see that this bad that was recognized here is clearly an anomaly, right? And we can just say, nope, there's no bad here. So it's easy to figure it out. And here we got some more results. Oh, the curtains, right? Yeah, so that's how it is. And let's get back to the presentation for a moment. Um, right, so after we train our model, um, we wanted to uh, figure, out, figure out a way to host it somewhere. And we thought we're going to prepare a um, RESTful API, so a web service. And we, we did that. We used uh, Flask, to, Flask module to create this uh, web service. And then we thought, oh, that would be cool to host it on Azure Web Apps. Um, and we did that. It was quite a fun uh, <laughs> to, to do it, really. Um, the outcome, unfortunately, was that it's not the best place to do uh, to host things like that, to host uh, models um, from CNTK. Why is that? Well, because the uh, computing power behind it is just first thing. It's CPU, uh, so it's not great for um, that much of um, that much of uh, operations. Uh, you rather would like to host it, I don't know, maybe in some kind of container on a machine with GPU. <laughs> that would be that would be really helpful because when I tested it, I can show you this. Uh, if I would test this um, web service, let me just host it here. Uh, so let's go like here, CNTK Python web service, and we want to run AppPy, right? And there it goes. If I'll try to send a request to 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 to, to return return image, this is the one. If I would like to send uh, this, for example, send it. This is uh, I'm sending a request to my local host, so the web service hosted locally using GPU power and stuff like that. The response took him three seconds, right? So it's still uh, quite a lot, but it's quite fast on the other hand. Because if I try to do it, try to do the same thing, uh, return image, same picture, send it. Yeah, we can just wait for another 20, 30, or even 40 seconds uh, to get some results. So um, as I mentioned, it was quite a fun. Um, we had a lot of fun to, to do it, but the outcome of that is you should not do it. <laughs> you should probably not do it and not host it on Azure Web Apps, definitely, um, because it's not a best environment to run your uh, models. Right. Um, here you have some useful links. As I mentioned, I will share the presentation after, so uh, you can check them out. Um, 
of course you get you have the github repositories for everything i showed so the um the repository for um, how to train the model. There's also a tutorial how to do it with your custom data, how to reuse it, so it's quite uh, cool. I, I spend a lot of time to prepare uh, those, and so, yeah. Um, and then another GitHub repository with uh, the Python-based RESTful API, uh, which can host a model and, and use it for um, classification. And then um, some additional info, um, there should be I don't see it here. Uh, by the way, um, it's not here, but I strongly um, advise you to, to check out something called Machine Learning is Fun, uh, which is a, a, it's a, it's a series of uh, blog posts, which is really cool. If you're starting with machine learning or you already know something about machine learning or deep learning, um, stuff like that, you should definitely check it out. It's a really, really good, uh, good read. And of course, thank you very much. We still may have a couple minutes to, you know, get some questions and maybe some answers. <laughs> and